Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature Is Your Door. And as you can see, I'm not at the door of my house in Southwest Virginia. I'm at about 9,000 feet right now in the Swiss Alps. I'm here above the village of Sasfe, which in the winter time is a ski community and offers some fantastic hiking and a dozen peaks over 14,000 feet. I've climbed four or five of these peaks here, but today we're hiking for the Morena Station at about 8,000 feet, and we're going to go up a trail here to the Britannia Hut and then summit the Klein Alalin at 10,300 feet. And on this trip, we're going to look at pioneer communities. As these glaciers are receding and the faster they're melting, we start to get soil formation beginning. And so we can see the pioneering communities. And walking around here, it looks like you're walking on the planet or, or, or on the moon. So stay tuned. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're going to find. You can see here as I walk up the mountain, this is just rubble and exposed rock and gravel. This is because all the newly exposed rock and gravel is from recently receding glaciers. Switzerland sadly has lost half its glacier size since 1931. And nowhere is this receding of the glaciers more visible than here in the Sasfe Valley. The warming of the planet is not equal. Here in the Swiss Alps, the mountain ranges are warming at twice the global average. Switzerland is home to half of all the glaciers in the European Alps, and they've been reduced by 50% between 1931 and 2006. Since 2016, the glaciers have accelerated in melting by another 12%. Researchers estimate that if greenhouse gas emissions continue to rise, the glaciers in the Alps will lose another 80% by the year 2100. You can see here in this photo, as you look up the mountain from the village of Sasfe, that the Fee Glacier has receded and you can see how much gray rock has been exposed as that glacier melts backwards and recedes up the mountain. As a matter of fact, on the path I am on now, it's not the original route to the Britannia hunt. That original route is no longer possible due to the melting of the glacier and the opening of crevasses that makes it too dangerous to navigate. So we had to take a long detour to get to the Britannia hut and the Klein Allen. With these glaciers in active recession, it's a rich place for researchers to study and investigate primary succession in pioneer communities, as we will do in this video. Just gotten to the top of a really steep incline, and I think we're just at about, we're almost uh, level with the Britannia hut right now, which is at about 10,000 feet. So I think we're about be somewhere between 9,500 and 9,800 9, feet. And I just can't, you know, just looking around, I'm so stunned by the scenery. We're surrounded by 14,000 foot glaciated peaks. However, you know, we're very aware of the glaciers melting back and the snow that might have been here in a normal year has melted away and it's just rock and dust and gravel. A lot of these rocks have been ground smooth by the weight of the glacier and the gravel in between the glacial ice and the rocks themselves. Uh, a lot of, we're seeing a lot of active erosion from wind and rain and water as these are uplift mountains that are slowly being eroded down. So what we're looking at here is the beginning of soil formation and the beginning of the first pioneer communities that try to grab onto life at this spot.
as you watch this video, you may observe many different glacial features, such as terminal moraines or piles of gravels that were pushed in front of the last ice front, meltwater streams, moraines, kettle lakes, U-shaped valleys, arets, and active erosion and falling of newly exposed rocks. When the glaciers recede, there is nothing left under the ice except rock and gravel and dust. There's no soil whatsoever and there's virtually zero nitrogen. Slowly, primary succession will begin. These first pioneer communities will be crustose lichens followed by foliose lichens and they'll colonize these bare surfaces, absorb water and release acids which further begin to disintegrate some of the rock. When they die, they're broken down by fungi, and you have the beginnings of humus mixed into the sand and dust in between the rocks. Insects and spiders may appear, and they will soon leave their wastes, which will also add nutrients and humus to the newly developing soil. Mosses will be the next in this series of primary succession, holding more water and creating more organic materials that are mixed in with organic content. The mosses will trap more moisture and wind-blown particles, and eventually some seeds may be blown in from other high alpine peaks. The first herbaceous flowers will begin a ten tenuous life cycle in this extreme harsh environment of such high winds that they can literally rip a plant from its roots. Extreme cold, short growing seasons, high UV radiation, extreme sunlight. These pioneer wildflowers have adapted in many different specialized ways to survive these extremes. Check out my video on alpine flower adaptations to learn more about the really varied and fascinating adaptations of these plants to surviving in this extreme, extreme environment.
gotta love hiking in Switzerland. After we came down off the pinnacle of the Klein Matterhorn, we stopped for refreshments at the Britannia Hut. The Britannia Hut offers all kinds of things, including wine and beer and water. And it's a hopping off point for many, many climbs, as you can see in this colorful sign. Well, I hope you enjoyed this Swiss Alpine episode of Nature at Your Door. We've gone up to 10,000 feet and we've returned back down to 8,000 feet where we're going to meet the cable car and go back down to the village. We've got another hike planned for tomorrow with a little bit of rock climbing mixed in. So thanks again for watching this episode of Nature at Your Door. Check out my playlist. I cover everything from fungi to insects and amphibians and snakes and trees. Check it out.